Hey everyone, you're welcome back to my channel, you're welcome back to Adora Hack and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you a roadmap, a study guide, call it whatever you like, but I'm going to be giving you, sharing with you things that you should learn if you are trying to transition into DevOps engineering or site reliability engineering. And I'd like you to stick to the end of this video because I'm going to be making an interesting announcement inside the video that I'm very sure you don't want to miss, okay? so. Let's get right into the video. So yeah, so the first thing I would always say, and this is the first thing I would always say anyway, and you can quote me, is that you should learn the fundamentals of computer science. And luckily for you, there is a free course, the Harvard CS50 course. I know many people that are taking that course and they keep coming back with fantastic reviews with amazing reviews for the course itself it teaches you about computers and computing because you can't be saying that you're working in devops in devops you're going to be dealing with a lot of computers you're going to be dealing with the cloud and trust me the cloud is a network of computers somewhere that we don't know something happened to one of my lights and i don't know why so i'll just keep using only one and you know carry on with this video so yeah like I was saying, one computer is already problematic. You don't want to add more. <laughs> you don't want to add more and not know more about it. Do you get what I mean? Like, um, how do I say this? One computer is already problematic. And you're going to be dealing with multiple, many multiple problems. So it's important that you understand the fundamentals so that you are not building knowledge on a sandy soil foundation that can sink at any time. So you, when you do fundamentals of computer science, you learn about operating systems. So you'll be exposed to Linux, you'll be exposed to Windows, you'll be exposed to like, you know, the different operating systems that you can use, right? Um, you would also learn about security protocols and networking. You would understand why certificates are important. When someone says SSH, SSL, HTTPS, you would know what they're talking about. You would learn about multi-threading and concurrency. So when someone is talking about deadlock or live lock or race conditions, you know what they're talking about and you will not only be able to contribute to these conversations, but when you have issues with computers, because I promise you these issues would come up, you would know how to troubleshoot and how to fix them. The next thing I want to talk about is that you should learn scripting languages. You should learn bash scripts. You should learn how to use the command line, whether it's PowerShell or, you know, bash, like I just mentioned, you need to know how to write scripts because you are going to be doing a lot of things in the context of virtual machines. And that means you're going to be writing a lot of scripts because you're going to be giving these machines commands. So you need to understand the scripting languages. Another popular, I don't know if I should call it a language. Another popular declaration that you should learn as well is YAML. Many build pipelines today because as a DevOps person, you're going to be dealing with, you're going to do a lot of CI CD. There is a lot of CI CD in your, in your future. What this means is that you're going to create a lot of build and release pipelines. And many, if not all of these pipelines are written in YAML. I don't know of any other language or declaration that is used to write pipelines that is not YAML, except you are doing it in the interface, which I want to believe translates to YAML that they give the computer. But everything, or rather many of them, the most common ones are written in YAML. The next thing that you need to know is cloud providers. As someone working in DevOps or in SRE, you are going to be, there's a lot of cloud providers in your future. You're going to be working in the context of either Azure, AWS, GCP, DigitalOcean, Oracle Cloud, IBM Cloud, or the other ones that exist. So you should understand the fundamentals of cloud services and the fundamental services that some of these services offer. For example, you should learn about things like serverless architectures, right? You should know databases, different kinds of databases that exist, document databases, relational databases, because you will be doing a lot of infrastructure provisioning, right? Which would bring me to my next point about you learning about infrastructure as code. Okay, so break in transmission, please break in transmission. If you're watching this video and you like it, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you're watching this video and you're not subscribed, please make sure that you subscribe. Please, what are you waiting for now? And all this passerby is apropos. You come here, you watch, and you go. Come and subscribe. Thank you very much. And come and join our little community. Come and join our family. Also, if you are watching 
this video and you feel like there's something that I left out, please make sure that you leave a comment um, so that other people can, as they're watching this video, scroll through the comments and learn from your own comments as well. Also, if you have any questions for me on DevOps or anything like that, make sure that you leave them in the comments. I'll be in the comment section to answer your questions, questions, contributions, prayers, feedback, all of that. Definitely welcome in the comment section. Thank you. So infrastructure as code is, you know, the ability to write normal programs that can declare infrastructure or that can create and manage infrastructure for you as opposed to going to like the Azure portal to, you know, start creating the infrastructure. For example, if you want to create a web app, you go to the portal and you click new web app. You know, things like that. It's harder to manage, especially for large scale applications. So you want to be able to write code that you can version, write code that you can roll back on if any problem exists, write code that you can debug and things like that. There are tools that have their own languages for how they do infrastructure as code. So if you're going to be using something like Terraform, you would want to know HCL, that's the HashiCorp language. If you're using something like Pulumi, Pulumi uses like normal programming languages. So you can know like C Sharp, JavaScript, Python, and some other languages that I don't know. I don't know the other languages in their catalog, but I know C Sharp, JavaScript, TypeScript, Python are uh, four languages that Pulumi offers. Um, if you're going to be using all these other tools like Ansible and the rest, then you have to know their language. If you're going to be using something like Azure, you're going to either be writing infrastructure as code templates in JSON using ARM, or you're going to be writing it in Bicep. So these are things that you should no and in your journey to learning devops you can learn all these things because these are things that i would say are very important so now let's just quickly define what devops is devops answers a very important question and the question is how do we build ship test and maintain resilient applications at scale that's exactly what devops answers so as a devops person a lot of your work is going to be in automation. A lot of your work is going to be in defining processes and making, you know, and automating these processes that you defined. Do you get what I mean? Like CI CD is just one of them. You're going to automate infrastructure deployments as well and other areas that you deal with and things like that. And for SREs, the most important thing for site reliability engineering as the name implies is that the application is working right so infrastructure and application monitoring tools are big here alerts and the rest you want to make sure that the application is working and if there's an incident you want to make sure that you fix it and the application is healthy and quickly mitigated and then maybe later you can go ahead and resolve whatever the problem was but you want to get that application back to a working state so that your customers are not you know, locked out for a long time. Another thing that is important in learning DevOps is the concept of virtualization. Like I said, you're going to be dealing with a lot of VMs and it's important to understand. And I think virtualization is also something you would cover in fundamentals of computer science because you need to understand about VMs, the concept of single tenant, multi-tenancy and different things. It just helps put a lot of things in perspective when you are thinking about applications, where they run, resources, how resources are provisioned and a lot of other things. It really helps a lot. Next thing that you should learn is containerization. Nowadays, everybody is building their application and microservice. I don't know who sent them. If you see them, you can help me with their shits and ask why. Because me, I don't even know. <laughs> trying to be very serious throughout this whole video but i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm really sorry but yeah i don't know why many people are using microservices but they are using it so what this means is that as a devops person there is a lot of containerization in your future you know learn about docker learn about kubernetes learn about pods learn about containers learn about container registries um learn about serverless containers that's becoming a thing now you know different things that you need to learn and um, I, you can take these things step by step, bit by bit, so that they don't overwhelm you. But these are skill sets that you need to have because these are things that you're going to be dealing with every day. So yeah, one important skill I would always say that people working in the context of software engineering should have, um, whether as a software engineer, as a DevOps person, or as an SRE, is 
you know, design patterns, the concepts of software engineering, data structures and things like that. Like they help you be an engineer. Do you get what I mean? I don't know the better phrase to use, but like these things help you be an engineer. So it's important that you learn them. And that's why I tell people that the skills for a backend engineer and in DevOps engineer are very transferable. So you can start your career if maybe you're trying to, as a junior person, find DevOps roles and you're not getting any, you can start your career as a backend dev and then transition two to three years into your career into DevOps if, that, if that's something that you really, really, really want to do. And you'll find out that a lot of things, you know, the nomenclature, a lot of things that you'll be hearing, the terminologies, they're the same-ish, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's important to just note that as well. The next thing you need to learn is some CI CD tools like Circle CI, GitHub Actions, Azure DevOps, Team City, and like other kinds of CI CD tools. You don't need to learn all of them to be honest, because at the end of the day, learning one, and that's why I keep talking about fundamental things, learning the fundamentals of one, if you move to a different job that uses a different one, because you already have that fundamental knowledge, it's just the syntax that is really changing for you and some other key implementations. But the fundamentals are generally the same. So when you learn about CI CD tools and you learn about the cloud providers, you'll be okay. As a DevOps person, the fundamentals and the concepts are more important than the tools. Personally, if I was hiring for a DevOps role, I don't care that you have an AWS or an Azure certificate. What I want to see is that when I ask you questions, you can actually be platform agnostic, you can be programming language agnostic, and you can answer me, you can answer these questions fundamentally. Because the truth is, you might be working in a company that is using AWS today, and tomorrow you move to a different company that is using Azure. Are you not going to tell me that you can't take on the Azure role because you don't have experience using Azure? I see a lot of that in the software engineering space today, where someone will be asking, the language or oh, this programming language is python i don't want to do it it's only javascript there right if you fundamentally knew programming you would be able to switch between python and javascript it might just take some time to understand the implementation of the new language that you're picking up but it should not be something that should deter you from taking on an opportunity so focus on the concepts focus on the fundamentals as opposed to the tools you can learn that anytime to be honest yeah and i'll say you know keep on learning this this journey never ends if i'm being really honest um i am still learning people that are before me are still learning people that are after me are still learning we're all still learning and we're learning together so please if there's anything you feel that i left out that is important for a devops engineer to know leave it in the comments so now let's go straight into my announcements so i have created a booklet for you um you can find the link in my description i have created a booklet for you that has a lot of things devops related and I'm calling it a booklet because it's a very small book. Uh, it's not up to 100 pages. <laughs> it's not up to 100 pages. It's a small book. So I'm calling it a booklet, right? I've created this booklet for you and it's free. So click in the link and get it. For people interested in DevOps, please share it with people that are very interested in this because I would like to help as many people as I can. So this booklet has you know, a roadmap for studying DevOps, an updated and realistic roadmap for studying DevOps, um, either as someone that is transitioning or someone that is coming new into the space totally. And there are some DevOps engineering questions that are there as well as a few tips in DevOps career journey and things like that. So this is like a DevOps handbook. It's a very small handbook, not so many story, no code inside, you don't need all of that. It's the most important thing is the message that I want to pass on with that book and I believe that it will definitely help you. Please make sure that you share with as many people as you can because you know this would help a lot of people. Like I said, it's free so you can go to the link in the description and you can get it. Uh, especially for you guys that have watched my video for now. Um, people that do not watch this video, maybe I'll make them pay for it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. It's not that deep. Uh, put it open to everyone for free. Definitely putting this thing out. Um, interested, interested in getting more people to join. 
you know devops this year as well as my book my book on azure devops is also coming up pretty soon so watch out for that so i'm currently writing a book on azure devops i'm writing it with wiley i don't know if i've said it on youtube yet excited about that so watch out for that as well because that's also coming soon but before the book launches you know you can enjoy this booklet you just use it to hold body small you know learn some stuff about devops and the cloud and what it requires for you to you know pick up a devops engineering role or start up a devops engineering career and i hope that this has been very useful to you you know i look forward to seeing you and doing more devops -y things with you who knows me and you might work together in the future at some point um thank you so much for watching this video till the end thank you so much please show me love it's not easy to put together a book at this point it's actually a book it's not because i'm being humble and calling it a bullet a booklet it's not easy to put together a book it's not easy to write three books in two years i wrote cloud engineering for beginners i did this one and i'm about to release my azure devops book with wiley it's not easy to do all of these things so please show me some love subscribe to my channel share for people to join to subscribe to the channel or to get the book or just to support me or my community in any way in general and the goal is for all of us to keep go the goal the goal is for all of us to keep going and sorry the goal is for all of us to keep glowing and growing together thank you so much and i will see you in my next video bye <laughs>